Over the last week, I've been designing nothing but double exposure posters. In this video, I'm gonna be sharing a bit about the style, my key learnings and takeaways from this past week. And then we're gonna create a double exposure poster completely from scratch. If you're new to the channel, my name is Daniel. And while I'm typically a sports graphic designer specializing in the world of Ultimate Frisbee, I'm taking some time over the next several weeks to commit to really exploring a different poster design style each week. So this is called the double exposure effect. It's basically an image blended into a different image. And you've probably seen these types of designs on things like movie posters, album art, maybe even ad campaigns. And before we get into the tutorial, these are the things that stuck out to me the most when I was really going through looking at inspiration, trying the effect out for myself. I've got a handful of takeaways that you might find helpful. The first one is just that photo selection matters so much for these. You need to set yourself up for success when it comes to this double exposure effect. And I feel like if you've watched other YouTube tutorials explaining how to do this effect in Photoshop, sure, maybe you've understood exactly how to set the blend modes and masking to accomplish this. But if you're creating this from scratch by yourself, I really want to emphasize the importance of photo selection. And when it comes to the big subject that's containing the second overlaid image, human subjects are pretty standard here. Most of the double exposure effects you've probably seen are going to involve a blown up person, either just their head or maybe chest and up, maybe shoulders and up, and then housing that second image within. Now the direction the person is facing, that can vary a little bit. I've found the side profile is very easy to work with just because you have those facial features that you can separate out from the rest of the image. You really only need the very edge of that profile shot. Now, if you find a good portrait shot that is not a side profile, it's still doable to work with, but ideally that subject has either a plain piece of clothing on, like if they have a black shirt, you can use that dark background to house that second image. You really just want to find like the dark areas of a portrait and use that as the background drop for that second image. The extreme of leaning into this like dark background as your big subject is a silhouette. Like if you just have a subject silhouetted on a sky background or a white background and it's mostly just black with maybe small details on the very edges, that's a really easy photo to work with. Now when it comes to that second image, I'm talking about that inner photo that will kind of go within the big subject. Contrast is really important and typically you're gonna see these like wider landscape shots with maybe a single, very small subject, maybe a full body shot of the person looking out over a vast landscape. I feel like those are the types of photos that seem to really do well. And if you're using a landscape photo that has a lot of clouds or buildings, if you're using like a city background, you can use those elements to kind of pop out of the initial subject and make them interact a little bit more rather than simply housing the image exactly in the silhouette of the cutout. Another thing I've noticed is with cityscapes in particular, if you have a bright sky that is between two sets of buildings, you can use that sky to create a sort of gap in the main subject. And so you kind of get this split effect on the double exposure if you match the background color to that sky color. It's a cool effect to play with to just make the blending a little bit more seamless. A couple general Photoshop tips. You're gonna to wanna to be able to edit the photos and really pay attention to the masking of photos. Photo editing, just playing with the contrast, playing with curves, layers, exposure, really just the, the lightness and darkness of the different parts of the image. You're gonna to wanna to be able to manipulate that. And then with the masking, just making sure that second image is showing through in a nice, clean way without disrupting too much of that big subject you have in the background. And then when it comes to backgrounds for these poster designs, I personally have found white or light backgrounds to be kind of the ideal canvas for these types of effects. There's often a lot of detail going on in these double exposures between the subject and that inner photo. So again, going back to the idea of contrast, creating that contrast between like the detail of your main subjects and kind of a blank low contrast background, I think that's just going to give you a little bit more intrigue for the whole poster design. Hopefully those will start to get you thinking about the photo selection and about how you want to structure the composition, but we are going to jump into Photoshop now. Let's put together a poster design. So this is the inspiration board I initially put together. You'll see the common theme in these is taking dark parts of the image and using that as a canvas. So obviously you have like a full silhouette here. You have darker parts of this heavily shadowed portrait and then same thing with these portrait and side profile shots as well. So we're gonna use the same concept to create our poster design. Let's start by dragging in what we'll use as a subject. So this is our main photo. 
Just a photo I got from Unsplash.com. I'm gonna size this up a good amount. I believe all the assets I'm using are from Unsplash. Some of them might have been from Adobe's free stock collection. Now I wanna select the subject just to mask this out from the background. It's on a white background, so it doesn't matter too much, but we're gonna have some text at the top that I want like going behind this cutout. So let's hit W for quick selection tool. And then if you go to select subject up at the top, while our layer here is selected, that is gonna create a rough estimate of the subject. And this is gonna work for our purposes. Let's just click this mask button at the bottom right, and you can see it masked out the image. So when you remove the background, you have this onion skin, and we can add parts of this back with a white brush. So we've created this mask on our image, basically anything in white is showing through that part of the layer and anything in black, it's hiding that part of the layer. So if we paint on with a white brush, that is gonna re-reveal parts of the image. So like this hair detail down here, we can just take a soft white brush and bring those parts back. Same thing with the hair over here. Now let's bring in our second image. This is going to be what we use to put kind of inside the subject. I'm just gonna size this down a little bit and we'll line it up with the top of our subject's head. Because we're on a white background, we can just set this blend mode to screen. This is gonna be the main takeaway for creating this double exposure effect. Basically take an image, put it on another image where the background is dark and then set the blend mode to screen, which will remove the dark areas of the initial image and kind of replace them with a blended version of this background. So you can see where it's blending in with the hair just on the sides. And I'm gonna use the hair and kind of the flow to take out some of this part of this image. So let's put a mask, just a white mask on this image by clicking that mask icon. You now go back to your brush and take a black brush. We're gonna set the hardness to zero and just softly brush out this part over here. And I kind of want to line it up with this bit of hair. And if you take like a bigger brush, you can more gradually fade it out. Now I'm just gonna click around the edges a little bit and further blend the image in. And we really don't need it affecting the face here. So I can just color this out all with this black brush. For me, because we're getting this dark hair, the light sky over here doesn't really fit right to me. So I'm gonna bring a curves layer in here by going to your adjustment layers, go to curves. And now we can clip this curves layer to our image layer by holding option and clicking in the space between the layers. So we have this arrow. And now I'm gonna affect just the kind of the darkness of this area by bringing this down. We can bring this point down. And I just wanna make it feel a little bit more in line with the actual hair color. So just a darker vibe instead of a brighter sky. And honestly, the whole image could work as we have it right now. What we could also do is kind of spotlight this subject in the wider shot by going to your mask on the curves layer and making sure your brush is set to black as the foreground color. Then you can just click in this area to hide that part of the curves layer, which is basically re-brightening this part or making it how it looked before we added the curves layer on there. And that just draws further attention to this main subject while keeping the sky and everything dark kind of more in line with what the hair is doing. So I'm just gonna go back over and clean this up a little bit. I want this gradual fade coming in from the right side. Now for our text, let's make a layer below our main subject. New layer, T for your type tool, and we're just gonna type out journey in all caps. The font we're using is called Black Skull, and I'm gonna center justify this, blow it up nice and big. This is gonna be like our main poster title. And I've pulled up my grids with command apostrophe. You can toggle those on and off. I have a whole video on grids, guides, and margins, but we're gonna use like a three box margin from the top and right and left for this text placement. So we've got like a slight bit of overlap with our main subject, which I think is helpful in any poster to have the main image just interact with the text in some way. So along those same lines, I'm gonna start adding a little bit more text. I've already typed into ChatGPT, give me suggestions for a poster titled Journey. And this is kind of what I've been doing throughout this process. Not caring too much about what the type says, it's more about just figuring out the layout and placement of everything. So I came up with this bold and edgy one that I like, where it just says start, mess up, reroute, basically a bunch of like single words or phrases. I'm gonna use that to kind of like scatter these words across this design. And we'll start with 
start. Let's make a new text layer. For this font, just because this is more of like a display font, I'm gonna switch it to Montserrat. We'll use 12 point and I'm just gonna keep it small. Again, bringing up the grids. Let's use a two box margin for these. Maybe we start it there. And then I'm gonna Command J to duplicate this layer and then drag it over. Just gonna move it down and a two box margin on this side. Next word is mess up and Command J again. I'll kind of repeat this process for all these words. Let's bring all these smaller text layers on top of everything so we can see it. And just kind of skipping down some boxes and moving them over. And by the way, I got this pink color for the text by just eyedroppering part of our subject's shirt down here. So if you hit B for your brush tool and you hold Option, you'll that's a shortcut for the eyedropper tool. So that's what I use just to quickly sample different colors. I'm gonna make this big stroked text effect on our title by duplicating the journey title, Command J, and with the layer beneath it, I'm gonna Command T to transform. Just blow this up nice and big. And now if you go to your effects, go to stroke and set the color to our color and size two pixels, you can hit okay and then drop the fill to zero. And we've kind of got this like stroke text going around the outside. I'm gonna further separate the title from the stroke text by putting a mask on the stroke text. Let's put the stroked journey in a folder and then hitting M for our rectangular marquee tool. I'm gonna draw a box around Journey and try to keep it evenly spaced the best I can. You can also draw out a rectangle and actually center it to make sure. Then holding Option, you can click on this mask icon and it'll basically take out or erase anything that's in the contents of this folder, which is just our stroked Journey text. So kind of a fun text effect and it gives us this little bit of white space to work with up here. So I'm gonna steal another little phrase from ChatGPT. I liked this one, the path is yours to define. So let's Copy that. Let's take one of these text layers, duplicate it, and just copy and paste. We'll do this in three lines. So we'll do the path is yours to define. And we'll left justify this and align it like so. So it kind of fits nicely in there. We can add a few more effects to our double exposure. I have these layers for birds and clouds. So I've got this flock of birds. Just to show you an example of how you can incorporate these into a design, I'm setting this blend mode to multiply just because these are black birds on a white background and let's shrink them way down. So we can kind of have these birds like flying off the edge and they kind of get lost on this background, but that's okay because we're gonna also add some clouds. So using this clouds image, we've got clouds on a black background, so we can set this blend mode to screen to isolate these. And I'm gonna put these under the birds so we can kind of see the birds on the back. But maybe this, this cloud over here can just serve as like a bit of fog. I'm gonna put an inverted mask on these clouds to basically hide all of them. And then with a white brush, just gonna brush back in this cloud over here. And then we can duplicate this layer, see if we want any more clouds just by deleting this layer mask. Maybe we want something up at the top so again, inverting the mask and brushing this one back in. And I wanna make this one kind of seem like it's coming from the background. So ever so slightly, I'm just gonna take a black brush and fade out this part of it. And the color is also like, these are more white or grayscale clouds, whereas the sky is more of like a blue tone sky. So what we can do is take a selective color layer, adjustment layer and clip this to each of the cloud layers by holding option hovering in the space and clicking, and just add a little bit of blue, maybe a little bit of magenta, make it darker. This one is pretty close in color to this, so maybe we can take the same selective color layer. Yeah, and I think let's reset it to the default, and maybe we just bring in, make it a little bit darker. These birds too, I don't know if we need all of them. They might also be a little small, but maybe we can mask out some of these stragglers. So again, with the mask, we'll take a black brush, on our white mask. Let's add some finishing effects to this whole design. So I'm gonna make a folder on top of everything. We'll call it finishing. First thing, I wanna take this white background color and really all the white in this design, just using a selective color layer. We can take the whites and make it more of a yellow or a red. Maybe this pink color is nice. And this is just to make it like a little less, you know, plain white. Let's bring this whole thing into camera raw filter by making a new layer. Command option shift E is the way you can stamp this image onto its own layer. And then going up to filter, convert for smart filters, then filter camera raw filter. We can go in and edit just some various color settings for this poster. 
in the light category. I might lower the highlights just to bring in some more contrast to this pink that we used. Shadows, you can see, maybe we boost those. Kind of like a somewhat low contrast feel, but I like the, the detail we're getting in the cutout. Can always add some texture and clarity to bring in some more detail. And vignetting, I like to decrease a little bit just to get some darkness in the corners. And let's definitely add some grain, like maybe somewhere around 40. And now when it comes to colors, I think color grading is a great resource within Camera Raw Filter. Just lets you play with the different values, like you have the shadows, midtones, and highlights, and what color you wanna make each of those. So shadows, maybe we go somewhat of a cyan, we could make the midtones more yellow, highlights could be more pink or yellow, somewhere in there. And you can see when you're in Camera Raw Filter, if you just hit the backslash key, that's a shortcut to see a before and after, see what your edits are doing. Last thing I wanna do is just throw a texture on top of this. So I have this grunge texture and I'm just gonna rotate it so it fits vertically. Maybe I want these like scratchy details more at the top. So let's flip it around like so. We'll set this blend mode to, you can play with screen, color dodge is okay. Maybe lighten is the best, doesn't really get in the way of the cutout just kind of has some detail on the darker parts of the image. So we're gonna stop there for our finished double exposure poster design. I want the focus of this video to be on this double exposure effect and choosing good photos for it. Obviously the different text elements and detail elements within the poster are totally up to you. You could take this image a variety of different ways. These are just the text options I chose for this image, but feel free to make it your own. You definitely don't have to follow this tutorial exactly step by step. Hope this video was helpful in giving you a good intro into double exposure and maybe fleshing out some ideas you may already have. Let me know if you have any questions. And as always, thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next one.